Hello everybody, welcome to another great episode of Hillbilly Wine 101. Tonight I have uh, kind of something cool, well, I'll talk about it here. Uh, Wendell, where is, Wendell, will you quit fooling around? Okay, now, this is Carlo Rossi. It's a um, 1.5, okay, it's like two bottles of normal wine. $7.99. Comes out of Modesto, California. It is really a, uh, it's Gallo makes it. <clears throat> it says um, Carlo Rossi Vineyards, but it's, it's Gallo. Um, Carlo Rossi was a salesman for Gallo uh, in the 70s. I'm not sure, so I know he was in the 70s, I don't know when he started. In the 70s he was kind of older, eh? And he did a bunch of commercials, kind of cool. He always said it. At the end, he goes, I love talking about the wine, but I really love drinking it. That was his big thing. And I remember when this sold. This also comes in a big jug, like three or 4,000 liters. Um, or three or four uh, liters, I should say. Anyway, uh, it comes, I don't even think it comes in a regular 750. It comes in the big jugs and the small jugs. And the jugs are so popular that you can buy them on eBay and stuff because people who make their own wine, uh, a lot of people who make their own wine, repurpose those jugs to put their homemade wine in. So they actually have uh, pretty good resale on those bigger jugs. This is the uh, in the 70s when I was in the uh, business. Um, and I've been doing some. I did some re needy. I got some other ones I want to do because... I could, my mind's still there, I can tell you exactly what sold, I used to know up the prices and everything at the time. Um, it's kind of when Americans, I think, or at least where I was, were just getting into wines and, and things. And this was a popular one, and it's, um, it's called uh, Paisano. I'm not sure what the grapes are in it. Um, it's a made-up name. They, they, Gallo used to make up names. Burgundy had nothing to do with Pinot Noir or France. They had one that just said Burgundy. They had one that said Chablis. It had nothing to do with France. They just used names that were popular and that were names for good wines and threw them on really uh, inexpensive bulk wine. But they sold pretty good because, um, you know, back then a lot of people, didn't, and you know, it depends if you're in a, in a blue class, working class neighborhood or whatever. Um, a nice big jug of wine, you're going to have a glass or two, uh, especially uh, some Italian Americans, a glass or two a night, uh, hard work and come home with dinner, and this is the kind of bulk wine uh, that people drank, unless it was a special occasion or something, and there's nothing wrong with it. Um, this is really, you know, what most people really are into, um, and I can appreciate wines like this, and I've had wines like this, and I enjoy them. And uh, especially, say, you drink a glass a night just for, uh, and a lot of people do it for medical reasons. Or if you just drink a glass a night with dinner to relax and you don't want to spend a lot of money on it. Um, there's a lot to choose from. Uh, this is a throwback to the 70s. He's gone now, Carlo Ross. He was an actual person. And um, let's give it a shot. Um, you know, I drink it all, folks. I, I, I drank it all. I drank it everywhere. I can appreciate it all. Okay? I never want to lose that. So, here we go. Same seems to be like the same label. I'm sure they changed a little bit, but from what I remember, it's kind of the same label. So, some Jug Carlo Rossi Paisano. Paisano in Italian means friend, right? Called Paisano. Hey, Paisan. What's up? Let's meet somebody. Uh, hey, Paisan. Let's go. We're late. <laughs> so, kind of uh, you know, a light red, uh, medium to light, kind of like a Chianti color or a Pinot Noir color. These are meant to be drunk, um, chilled, semi-chilled, you know, refrigerator, added air, or you want to leave it out maybe 20 minutes out of a refrigerator. Um, and young, you know, these aren't anything to age or anything. You buy it and you drink it. So, you know, honestly, and I've known a lot of people made homemade wine. Uh, my family's made homemade wine. Kind of smells like, and I've said this before about uh, wines, but um, whenever someone makes wines, uh, say in a garage, um, you walk in, you smell that uh, the smell of the of the, of the fermenting juices, uh, and that's what this smells like. Kind of a little sour, a little grapey. Um, great memories for me because I used to love that man walking in and, 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 and the barrel sitting there with the wine in it. Um, so that's what it smells like. Just smells. Um, 
kind of like soury, grapey cherry, um, you know, like it's uh, garage made wine, which is what they were going for. And now that it's uh, opening up a little bit, actually, smell like, um, oh, wait, um, the chocolate, like Hershey's chocolate, milk chocolate, kind of. A little bit on the back and the end, milk chocolate, and some free, uh, sweet fruits, sweet fruit, and a little bit of milk chocolate now. That little sourness and stuff like that, when I first opened, it's kind of dissipated. I don't really smell it anymore. Doesn't smell bad. It still smells homemade ish. Alright. Is that a word? Homemade ish. <laughs> First thing I noticed about this one, it's real thin, and what I mean by thin is if you drink water, how that feels, you probably don't pay attention to it. Uh, or if you drink uh, regular milk. Regular milk coats your mouth and feels heavy in the mouth. And then if you drink that all the time, and then water or skim milk feels um, thin or light. That's what this is on the mouth. There's not a lot of um, mouth feel. There's not a lot of tech. It's just kind of a watery uh, feel to it. It's um, So we call that, then if you hear it's thin, that's what that means. A little bit of acid I'm detecting. Um, some tannin, very light tannin, <clears throat> um, just light tannin, tannin, medium to medium plus acidity, um, watery feel, and just a, um, not sweet, but not bone dry, uh, a little bit of residual sugar, I don't know what the, um, how many grams per liter is in here, but um, not bone dry and not sweet, so somewhere in between bone dry and sweet. Um, not a lot of, you know, just really light, just, um, just really a good wine to sit around and, and like if you're watching the game, like I'm going to be doing tonight, and I'm going to drink this, or with a, a typical, uh, you know, you can have with, uh, with white, you know, spaghetti, uh, you know, with olive oil and, and uh, Parmesan cheese, uh, you can have it with the red sauce. I think it's a fun one. I think it's more of a burgers, um, hot dogs, uh, pizza, wine. This is what they call a pizza wine and all things associated with the pizza type the dishes. Or to sit around and uh, you got some people over, you know, they drop by unexpectedly, un unexpectedly, like would be in the old days, especially in Italian neighborhoods, right? We have company, and then company would come over, and you get the wine, you pour it, and you hand everybody a glass real quick. You always keep it on hand, you keep the coffee cake on hand, you put some coffee on, you get ready for company. Company don't come by anymore now, you know? They, like I said, in the old days, the doorbell rang, you got excited, right? The company was coming. Oh, get the wine. Oh, come on in. Get the coffee. Nobody gets allowed to touch the coffee cake. It's for the company. You throw the coffee on, right? You're ready. Now, you know, the thing goes, what do you do? You run, you, everybody hides, you get the gun out, you, you hope they go away, you hope they don't kick in the back door. It's not like it used to be. So this harkens back to those days. So for that, if you like a light wine, uh, you don't want to spend a lot of money, you can get the big jug, you want to drink a glass a night with dinner, or a glass a uh, night before you go to bed. Doctor told you glass a night's good for the old ticker. Um, but you don't like the bone dry, astringent, you don't want to spend a lot of money, you're not there yet. Or you're there yet, but you don't want to do that every night. Then why not get a Carlo Rossi Paisan? Huh, Paisan? So, Paisans. You know, for what it is. Anyway, this is Hillbilly Wine 101. Cheers, everybody.